wondering if you should add two medicine to your Glacier National Park itinerary? I'm here to tell you if you should. Hi there, I'm Alex from Alex on the Map and I grew up right by Glacier National Park. However, I did not explore the two medicine area until last year. It was my first time visiting and I'm so glad I did. If you are looking for a little bit of a quieter experience without the crowds and just a more, I don't know, compact, experience then this is for you however i will mention that there is not a lot of information on to medicine when my husband and i were looking up hikes and deciding what to do we kind of had trouble finding what was the best option for us so that's why i'm here and why you're going to want to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you get information on glacier national park all the time I also have a blog post on this, so you can check that out in the description below. It goes into a little bit more detail about why you should visit to medicine and what you need to know. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. First and foremost, I'm going to talk about the best things to do in Two Medicine and why you should do them, why you should add them to your list. Overall, I just think that it's one of the more beautiful areas of the park that most people don't know about. And of course, you're going to want to add the west side of the park and Mini Glacier to your itinerary, but you're also going to want some quieter moments that maybe aren't so super crowded with people. And this is why I highly recommend Two Medicine Lake because it is equally as pretty as Swift Current Lake and Many Glacier, and just as beautiful as Lake McDonald on the west side. But you're not going to have the crowds that you would have at either one of those lakes. I'm also surprised too because when people promote Glacier National Park, a photo of this lake comes up a lot. But that's great for you if you want a little bit of a chiller experience. So you have the reflection of the mountains in the lake and again, just makes for a great photo op. If you are planning on catching that photo, I do recommend getting up early just because if there is smoke in the area, it's less likely to be glaring at that point. And then you also won't have people in your shot as well. Another thing you might want to check out when you are in the two medicine area is whether or not you want to take a boat tour. You can take a boat tour on several different lakes in the park, but one of the great things about the two medicine area, again, is reservations don't fill up quite as quickly. If you are trying to get a boat tour on say Lake McDonald or St. Mary, it's going to fill up a lot faster than it would in Two Medicine. Personally, I just find it as a very calming experience as well as opposed to just being shuttled on with a whole bunch of people and doing the tour. Another thing you are not gonna wanna miss and you probably won't miss because it is right on the lake is the Two Medicine General Store. It was pretty much built when the park became a park, which was 1914, and it's a great place to stop to grab in overpriced snack and to enjoy the lake from the front porch. You can sit out there with a cup of coffee and just simply enjoy the view. We're all about Two Medicine Lake. I also recommend taking out a canoe at this lake specifically. I've taken a canoe out at Swift Current and to be honest, when the wind picks up, it's almost impossible to paddle. Two Medicine is usually a little bit quieter. Again, you have fewer people vying for those canoes or kayaks. And it's just, if you are a beginning kayaker, this is the lake. You do not want to do the other lakes. The cost for that is about 20 to $25, so it's definitely not going to break the bank for you either. Another reason why Two Medicine is super underrated is the fact that it has one of the best camping spots in the entire park. There's over a hundred spots at this campsite and it does fill up quickly, but again, not as quickly as those other spots in the park. It's got everything. It's got water, it's got a picnic table, it's got flush toilets. I know, we're really living it up. I would recommend looking a few months in advance of your trip to book on recreation.gov just to make sure that you have those spots for your dates. But again, you're much more likely to grab them at this spot than you would in other areas. This is also a great spot for backcountry camping if you are interested in really hitting the trails. Um, you can also grab those on recreation.gov several months in advance. Another thing I want to mention too before we get any deeper into this video is you do not need reservations for Two Medicine this year. Previously, you did need reservations to enter this area, but the park decided that it wasn't populated enough 
enough to need that. So that's another plus if you aren't into planning specifically to have a reservation for every single day you are in the park. All right, let's dive into some of the best hiking trails in the area. And this is another thing I really like about this area too, is none of the hiking trails are super strenuous. In fact, that's why I think it's so great for older people or kids because none of them are going to be super overwhelming for them. First and foremost, you're gonna to wanna to do Running Eagle Falls. It's 0.7 miles with an elevation gain of 29 feet. And it's very little work for what you get at the end, which is one of the best reasons to add it to your list of hikes in the Two Medicine area. Best part about it too, it is wheelchair accessible. So if that is something that is on your mind when planning your trip, make sure you add this hike because you can still see some beautiful nature and it's easy to get to. Another easy hike that is 1.3 miles and 147 feet of elevation gain is at Bastoki Falls. For anyone who just wants to experience nature at its best, these falls are amazing. Again, not a very difficult hike to get there. They're kind of some of the most famous falls in the park, but again, two medicines, that secret area where maybe you wouldn't know about it. I gotta throw in a hard hike in here, come on. Like we, we gotta just throw in one backpacking trip here. If you are interested in doing something a lot harder, Dawson Pass is on my bucket list. I haven't done it yet, but I am hoping to do it maybe next year if I can. The reason why I wouldn't recommend it for everyone, it is 14.1 miles with an elevation gain of 3,225 feet. You are right on the Continental Divide, meaning you have towering mountains by you. It's just a beautiful pass that you walk through. It is in prime bear country. It's just all the adventure all at once. Again, I wouldn't recommend this for every hiker and you might need a backpacking permit for it if you plan on doing it in more than one day. One hike I was really surprised by and I wasn't expecting much was Astor Falls. It's 2.6 miles with 213 feet of elevation gain, so not a very difficult hike. And the waterfalls were just really nice. It was just a wonderful place to stop and take a picnic lunch. Um, to enjoy after walking around uh, the Two Medicine Lake. I just found it really, really nice and perfect for kids. All right, let's talk about where to chow down after you have had your Two Medicine adventure. Because unlike other areas of the park, there is no restaurant within that area. You have to go outside of it. The Two Medicine Grill is the one I usually point my clients to when they wanna grab a hearty meal after they're done. It's got locally sourced ingredients, which is kind of cool, and they really stick to that Montana theme. So you can go home and tell people you had a decent hamburger and steak. Serrano's Mexican restaurant is kind of a staple in the area. It's kind of famous for being the only Mexican you can find for probably around 100 miles around there. If you're a backpacker, it's kind of, you have to stop. It's, it's tradition. Before you go on a big hike and when you come back, you stop at Serrano's. The taco board has plenty of food and you get to try a bunch of different options. Okay, here are some tips to help you make the most of your time in Two Medicine if you decide to go. Planning ahead is very important when you are headed to this area of the park just because there is not as much information on it as you might find on other areas. Leave No Trace is also super important. While the whole of Glacier is sacred land to the Blackfeet tribe, Two Medicine is very specifically one of their most sacred sites. And even though it is a lot quieter than other areas, I do recommend that maybe you go early in the morning or later in the afternoon for the best experience. Cause there might not be as many people, but there still might be more than you would like. So this kind of allows you to enjoy it when it is a little bit quieter. The weather in Two Medicine can change very quickly. So I recommend being aware of that looking at the weather in advance and packing for what you need so you don't end up in this area, in this very remote area and not having what you need. Also, I think specifically for the Two Medicine area, there is a lot of wildlife. We saw moose, uh, bears are very common. We saw a moose and a black bear within an hour of each other in this area. So 
Being respectful of wildlife is very important here, and also knowing how to use bear spray can be a big deal. Remember to keep at least 100 yards away from bears and pretty much 25 yards away or more from everything else. I also recommend exploring maybe some lesser known hidden gems in the area. While it's super easy to just hang around to Medicine Lake and enjoy it, there's also upper to Medicine Lake that doesn't get nearly as much traffic, or some other hikes that you might want to take on that aren't the top ones, and they're just equally as beautiful, if not more so. All right, let's dive into FAQs for Two Medicine. If you are curious where Two Medicine is, it is in the southeastern part of the park. You have Many Glacier, and then you have the St. Mary region, and below that, you have Two Medicine. This makes it also a great stopping place if you are headed around at the south end of the park and you want to go from the east to west or west to east. How do you get there? If you put in East Glacier National Park Village into your GPS, that will pretty much get you to Two Medicine. You're going to follow Highway MT49 until you get to some signs that will point you in the correct direction. But again, your GPS should help you figure it out pretty easily. Two Medicine Road is the road you will enter from and it will take you right down to the lake. Also, fun fact, you can take Amtrak to this area of the park so it stops at East Glacier where you will get off and you will be right by Two Medicine. So one question I get is how far is this away from everything else? And it is pretty distant. East Glacier is not much of a town I'm gonna be completely honest. It's pretty pretty small. I think there is a total of maybe two places to stay and two restaurants. It is only 10 to 15 minutes away from the two medicine entrance, which makes it a good place to stop, grab a snack or a coffee before you head in. Whitefish is the next closest major town. It is 105 miles away from two medicine. So it is a bit of a drive and it will take you time to get there. It's usually about two to two and a half hours, depending on traffic and the weather that time of year. Kalispell is the biggest and it's 110 miles away from East Glacier. Again, it takes about 2.5 to 3 hours depending on traffic and weather. Many people also ask if there's an entry fee for Two Medicine and the answer is yes. Like all areas of Glacier, you will need a parks pass to enter. You can do the seven day basic entrance for $35 per car or you can do an annual Glacier Pass, which gives you access to the park all year round for $70. Finally, this is the one I recommend if you plan on visiting more than three parks within a year, it's the annual park pass. You get unlimited access to the more than 400 different sites in the national park system and it's for $80 a year, which is not a bad price. Again, for Two Medicine, you also do not need a reservation this year. I would recommend if you are watching this in the future for future years, taking a look to make sure that they haven't changed that. Biggest question I think we need to ask, is Two Medicine worth visiting? And I would say that if you have a lot of time in Glacier, say maybe seven to 10 days, it should absolutely be on your itinerary. If you're popping in for maybe two or three, you might not be able to get quite to it. It might have to be something you experience on another trip back. But if you are planning on spending a lot of time in the area, this should be absolutely on your itinerary and I highly recommend you make the time to do it. If you have any questions at all about visiting Two Medicine, where to stay, where to eat, just let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to respond. I also wanna share that I have a free guide on the reservation system for this year, Yosemite and Rocky Mountain National Park reservation systems, as well as other parks, and feel really confident going into your national park trip this year. Again, let me know if you have any questions about Two Medicine and I will see you in the next video on Glacier.